Adam, thank you for joining us on the show. Um, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So, could you explain your martial arts history, what you started in? Uh, I know you mentioned earlier that you, you studied in uh, Chowgar Mantis, right, in Australia. So yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit like well, that? when I was a kid, I played around with judo or whatever, like anyone else, nothing serious. Then, yeah, in my teen years, 16, I guess, I started doing, yeah, Chow Ga and went hardcore into that, so. Yeah, and how long did you study that for? Four years, intense training at that, and I started Tai Chi at the same time, but the Tai Chi I was doing was not really Tai Chi, it was just slow Kung Fu, you know? And it was just, my Sifu at the time said, do some Tai Chi, you know, you won't regret it, it will pay off later, basically like putting pennies in the bank for later, so I just did it. But my heart was completely into the, into the madness then, and uh, yeah, I was totally absorbed for four years. After that, Tai Chi took over. Yeah. Okay. And what was it that, that, that made the Tai Chi take over? Like, what attracted you to more to Tai Chi than, than Mantis? Uh, I would say a video of Wang Qingxian was the turning point. I saw him, you know, throwing young guys around at light touch and laughing and having a great time while he was doing it. And my Mantis teacher was a serious martial artist, but he just didn't have that inner joy which I saw in Wong Ching Xian. And so I thought after a lifetime of training, not only does he have power, but he's happy, healthy, just seemed like a more balanced approach. Yeah, well, okay. And uh, did you notice a big difference? Or was it, was it quite hard going from a hard style into like a soft style like Tai Chi? I mean, yes. how did it feel going from like the hard training to, to that type of training? Uh, well, the thing is the body, it's not just your attitude and your skill and technique, the body was totally fused together from training the way you do in Tong Long and rounding the back and everything. Like my shoulders and back were one piece. So just learning how to loosen and set, drop the shoulders, it, was, it took years. You it know? took years just yeah. to get rid of that training. Totally. The undoing your body is, is massive, you know. Tai Chi training is about changing your mind and body into a new animal. I call the Tai Chi creature. So if you can change your body, you can do the art. If you don't change your body, you can't do the art. Like a body that does football or wrestling cannot do Tai Chi Chuan. A body that does praying mantis or another hard style cannot do Tai Chi Chuan. It's a different animal. It's not just doing a different technique. So that took a long time, a big transitional period. It was a struggle, for sure. And did you realize that more or less as soon as you started the training that you, you, know, you had to do? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like my first four years of doing Tai Chi alongside the mantis was not authentic Tai Chi, so it didn't matter. But when I started training properly and realizing that the tension in my body could be used against me, that it gave away my center, that I couldn't get the chi to flow, couldn't get the jin out, it was like, wow, I have to change everything about the way my body's organized and my mentality. Okay. Yeah. And what would you say the best way would be to, for someone that's going from a hard style into something like Tai Chi, the way to free up their body and make it open and loose? Well, traditional Tai Chi development, we, we have exercises for opening the body. Uh, yeah, like Kai Men, open the gates in the body, stretching exercises, Song Gong, so developing the release inside the body. There's specific exercises to do it. And but most important is what you don't do. It's not just what you do, it's what you don't do. So you get a lot of people, they do the Song Gong, they do the Kai Men, they do their Tai Chi, then they go home and they do push ups and stuff so they look sexy or whatever. Or they don't really believe it, so they secretly do external training. And they never get there because we're hardwired to use external force. It's natural. There's absolutely nothing natural about the internal way. You have to undo the natural way. So imagine if you were a drug addict for your whole life and then you want to quit to try a new clean path. But every week you, have a, you get back and you know, have another hit. You're not going to quit, are you? You must go cold turkey. Okay. So you have to go cold turkey and not use external force at all. This is what people are afraid to do, don't do, and why they don't get it. You must abandon external force completely. Yeah. Then you can gradually develop internal force and soul. Well, I have my definition, and I, you know, a lot of people will argue about this. So this is not necessarily traditional or anything. Everyone forms their views based on their life experience. So my experience tells me this, and some other quite skilled people I know agree. So my view is that there's two components. One is the internal means inside. Okay? Yes. That's what it means. So it means the inside of your body moves and changes more than the outside of your body. So that's the physical component. There's more movement on the inside than the outside. 
So uh, you see this when a highly skilled internal practitioner touches someone and they, they fire and they bounce someone away, but there's hardly any external movement, you know? It seems like there's too much power compared to the movement. Actually, there is movement, but the movement's on the inside. So internal means inside. Now, the other part is that that internal movement and change is generated via E and Qi. So moving, mobilizing the Qi inside the body creates the internal changes. So when those two come together, I call it internal martial arts. If you're not doing them, it's external, basically. Okay. Well, the, the chi, which we won't even translate, okay, we're just going to call it chi. When you release something, which is so, imagine I pick up a water bottle. When I release, what direction does it go? It goes down. So when you release the clinging, the holding, the tension inside your body, the chi sinks down. And if you do this over time with correct structure and the correct conditions, it sinks down, down inside the body. So this sinking gradually over time creates fullness. Like if you pour milk into a glass, essentially the milk is sinking down into the glass. But as time passes, only seconds in this case, it fills up. So sinking the chi is release, song, letting go, and the chi sinks down inside the body. Over time it fills up and you get fullness inside the body. So when the, you get some fullness, we say the chi is sunk. Okay. It's like the doorway into internal. If you don't have sunk chi, you can't do anything. And it sinks to the lower dantian. That's correct, yeah. It fills the dantian and eventually fills the whole body. Okay. And then how you move it inside the body is how you make power. But if you don't have any, you can't move it. It's not the same chi that keeps us alive. Right? Yeah. The chi running through your meridians can't be used to knock somebody over. It's a specific kind of chi and way we accumulate it in Tai Chi Chuan. For example, if I have no song, yep. but I'm relaxed, which is not the same, song is release, and, and he pushes on me a bit, he's just going to crush my structure, right? If I'm stiff, he's just going to push me out or make me uncomfortable. So you can touch my waist, actually. Do you want me to touch it? Yeah, just hold my waist okay. here. So you can just feel this sort of nothing there, right? So there's some force on my body, but when I... See, I release down, right? They feel everything sinking down, it creates fullness inside my body. So he gets stuck on my fullness. Okay. That's Hong. Okay. When so, you have so Pong, you can fight in. What exactly was you doing in that area? So you're just releasing? Releasing the whole body. And that's why it felt like everything dropped right. because of the release. Right. Okay. Now, because of that release, I can get some fullness inside my body. So when I move inside my body, I move the Qi, he's going to go. Okay? okay? It creates internal pumping of Qi, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So at that moment, so you're saying you're releasing? So right. Is it like a synchronization that you're doing to release? Yes, but it's not just synchronizing the whole body, definitely not. It's no. a movement inside. Waves, waves of power would be the best description. Because the chi is like fluid. We always talk about chi and blood being together. Yes. So it's a wave through the fluid, through the chi, right? And transmits through waves, not through balls and levers. So a lot of people sort of dig under and push up or yes. use angle tricks. And that's legitimate Kung Fu, but it's got nothing to do with in Tai Chi Chuan. Okay. Right, we're not talking about balls and levers, it's actually waves to move the chi through the body to generate power. Yes. Yep. They'll come. So if you just if he touches very lightly, no no force. So of course if somebody's very stiff, it's easy to control and they're clumsy. Yes. But if they're light, they're very hard to control because they can change their free. But light and soft is a relative. If I'm more released, more sung than him he'll still feel stiff compared to me, right? So, if I can sung more than him, I can control him because my chi will go into him. My fullness will affect him and then I can throw him out. So, it's dependent on my sung to control him. If I'm stiff, he controls me. So, whoever is more released has the advantage. That's why Tai Chi Chuan's all like calm and soft and we, we want to release the tension in mind and body. Say if you hold your hands up. If I touch you, so if you are super light, like it's harder for me to feel the hardness in your body, right? But if I release a little bit more than you, you don't feel so light anymore. Mm. So you'd be really relaxed, but still, you're not actually that relaxed. Yes, there's right? still tension there. Yeah, so of course if you're really stiff, I don't need to use any song, you're just going to be right there for me, right? So I can feel the tension in your body and throw you out. Now if I'm not 
song, a new move, I have to use technique, right? Yes. But if I song, you're going to feel uncomfortable, right? So at the moment you're uncomfortable, I have your root. When I have your root, of course, you can fire, you can strike, you can do whatever you like. Yes. In fact, Fajin is not for fighting. Okay. It's a way to train the power. You should hit them. It's depend totally level dependent. Uh, there are stages when it goes to the ground. There are stages where you turn it off the body. There are stages when it disperses inside the body. So you can choose where you want. It's more like year after year as you train, you change. Yeah. There are stages where it's no longer entering you at all. Okay. Yes. It's, uh, yes. So what's uh, the first one? The, the, the ground. The initial one goes yeah. down. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get you to push again, Curtis. You can feel my leg, actually. Okay. So if he pushes on me, and I'll use ground force first, so I'll do it to the arms. Uh, so he pushes, and there, you feel my, squeeze the muscle. Yeah, right, so because I'm bracing. So that's normal physics. That's, that's okay, it works. And you have to do that to build your structure. But if I empty out my body more so it gets transformed, <laughs> nothing in the leg, right? Push. It's not going into my leg, so I can just transform the force. So, stage dependent. What you do this week is right this week. Next week, next year. People get too caught on ideals and fixate. It's a changing process, yeah. What is right tomorrow might be wrong later, and so on. Okay. Sure. Okay. A recent debate that I saw online is people are talking about Tai Chi is a long range art, it's a long fist, and it doesn't have short range techniques or short range applications. What's right. your views on this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's. Tai Chi Chuan is at the range where you can touch somebody. Okay. That's it. So that could be body? It shoulder. can be here. I mean, we have endless techniques off the body. Endless. So if, if it's out here really far away from me, we'll just talk about push hands for now. Eh? If it's really far away, okay? Right? Okay. But so far away. If I can still project my chi, song, feel, I can still control, right? Now, if it's middle, then it's middle, okay? If it's the closest, cuddle me, right? Then this is the contact point, you see? I can use this. It's whatever we have. We can't choose make life perfect. Yeah. Hold on a minute, let me get in closer. It just doesn't work like that. The moment you touch, Tai Chi Chuan begins. So we call it the art of one touch. So we don't scramble for a better position. What you get is what you get and then you work with that. Now, saying that, we prefer to be in close. Yeah, prefer definitely. to be close. Yeah. For, what, for what reason? Uh, more control, bigger power output. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, most people need distance to make power, but we can make power very short. So, we're inside of their power range. Yes. They can't strike. The, the ideal is neither grappling range nor striking range. Okay. Halfway between. Body to body is too close for grappling. Out is too close for striking. We want to be at the push hands range, which is you can grapple and strike freely, but if you do Tai Chi, yes. but it's not quite close enough for conventional grappling, and it's not quite far enough for conventional striking. Oh, okay. That's what we like. It's a middle close range. Yeah. Most styles would call it close range. Yeah. Right, so everybody's fascinated with Fajin, but in fact Fajin is basic. It's like entry level skill, it says you have some internal stuff going on. Now people demo it because it shows you have some internal stuff going on and because you can see it, plus it looks spectacular. Okay. Najin's more invisible and very few people have the real thing. So in Tai Chi Chuan it doesn't mean locking the joints or like that, it's, a, it's more like freezing the person. How do you do it? Well, you have to be more Sung than the other person. If the other person is stiff compared to you, of course it's easy to move them. If you imagine a, a little iron bar, it's easy to move. But a chain, not so easy. Now that's very crude. Yes. But it's pointing at the idea. The more stiff they are, the, they are, the more tangible they are, the easier they are to move. So if you're just, just touching, more like push hands, so seizing when I, it just captures his body. Okay, because I'm sung, released, and my chi goes into him, it kind of grabs his tissue. So I use it to grab his tissue. Now when he tries to move, He's at, under control, it's to my advantage. Now, doing it in push hands is a lot easier because no one's trying to beat you up. Hopefully, right? Yes. <laughs> you should be sticking, working together. It's a training tool, it's not a competition. Of course, in striking, yeah, it's harder. 
much harder. So sticking and seizing work together. Okay. In Tai Chi Chuan we, call, we talk about stick, adhere, join, follow. So this is the process of how we interact. It's the tactic of Tai Chi Chuan. It's different to sticking in, say, Wing Chun or something like that. Okay? Uh, the primary difference is I'm not trying to stick to my opponent. My opponent is stuck to me. If I try to stick to my opponent, it's, it's easy if we're both doing push hands. But if he's a boxer and he's cracking jabs in and out, no, nah, can't do it. You will fail. But if they're stuck to you, you're not really doing anything. You maintain the conditions inside your body, which there are many, but the primary one is release, song, then they get stuck and you don't have to do it. So you can actually use it then. Okay. okay, so if I'm just released and relaxed but I don't have the real conditions and he throws the punch and I try to stick it, I try again, I still can't do it. I just can't, can't do it. It's too quick. Yes. But if I release properly, not relax, release properly, and I get the nair inside my body, hopefully I should be able to capture and stick to his motion. Now, that should seize him up so he gets stuck. When he gets stuck, I can do things. Yep. If he's not stuck, we're always going to be even Stevens. That's no fun. That's fighting. We don't want to fight. We just want to control and win. Okay. Fighting is it's too dangerous. Right? But one more song, so I have control. Of course, we don't just want to push them over. We want to finish the fight. So we stick, nah, and then strike or throw a kick or do whatever you want to do. Right? We strike and we finish. Right? However you like. It can be just really subtle and you strike. It can be any contact point. When you stick, you control. If you don't want to control and they just strike, but you just control and you don't want to do anything, they get stuck. The moment they're stuck, you have control. When you're frozen, it's easy to lose. When your opponent's frozen, it's easy to win. But if he's quick and I'm not doing it, it's just, it's too scary. Yes. Like, you know, you've got to run away and try and overpower them. Yes. But if you can seize, you can win. Now this is kind of the important skill in Tai Chi Chuan. And it's the one that people can't do. Actually learning how to fudge in, yeah, many people can demo that, but then when you move they can't do it. So you see a lot of teachers, okay, no, just touch me here, no, no, adjust, touch me here, let's make it all perfect, and oh, boom, okay. It's like a Qigong master. Yes. You have Qi, but it's not Kung Fu, as in it's not martial arts. So moving that Qi is great, but you have to be able to apply it to a moving person. And Hua, the transforming or neutralizing, and the Na are the two key points. Hua is the easy part, okay. once they're frozen. I'll do something more yieldy. So you stop them before they come in? That's one way. Yes. Yeah. More yielding? Yes. Or if you are letting him in. They don't want to use like... Sorry. <laughs> and far. Of course it's no good if you get to there, but life's not perfect. Can you explain how it felt when you... when you... Uh, the last one, so when you came body to body? So the last one, my feet were kind of stolen from underneath me. And that wave of pressure went to my neck. Okay. So that's why I couldn't... I couldn't break fall in time. Okay. It was like... It was too sudden. I'm, I'm up and then I'm on my back. So, did it feel like you had weight on you? Did it feel like you was being swept? Did... There's, there's a few things going on at once. Okay. It's kind of like a car accident. You don't know what happened first. Where was the whiplash? Was it this? Was it that? It's just like, my feet are gone. I'm on the floor. It's a perfect description. Like, even when you have a small car accident and you don't get hurt, but you get that boom, and you sort of, your mind gets shaken out of your body, that's what it feels so like. It feels yeah. Like, yeah. So then you can't prepare for it. Like you said, you can't break for it. It was, a, it was like a shock. Yes. The, the classic saying is, like, like thunder, so fast you, d you can't cover your ears. So the, the gin should come out in a moment. That's one of the advantages of not having to use, throw your body mass like external force, yes. which is powerful, right? And it works. But it has disadvantages. One is that you can see it coming. They might still be too quick, but it has a time continuum. But the gin is kind of like thunder, too fast, you can't cover your ears. Yeah. That's at least what we want, right? So, boom, straight on. So, so when the opponent's going to come, whether he's going to throw a, a punch or he's going to grab you, do you, do you already have in your mind what you're going to no. do to the opponent? No. Definitely not. Yeah. Stick it here, join, follow. We follow what's happening. Yeah. If I had in my mind, say he had me in the grapple, 
right? So you just do a motion, slow motion, Ramsey. So he's going to throw me like this, right? If my mind was to push down here and he was doing that, I'd give him my force. So he'd throw me, I'd become hard. When he moves, I have to follow what he's doing. Right? So you don't oppose the force, you don't resist it at all? No, we, we change with it and eventually basically they make an error. It's, yeah. yeah, the sticking and following, that's what push hands is for. A peaceful, non-threatening way to learn how to follow forces. Yes. How to adjust, how to change with forces. It doesn't mean you can't go against. Okay. You can, but it's, it's less classy, basically. Yeah. So sometimes, because life is imperfect, yeah, you're going to clash. And then the amount of your Neijin, the amount of your internal force is what saves you. You basically overpower them at that point. But that's it's an error in Tai Chi Chuan. Okay. But fighting's filled with errors. Right? Okay. Yeah.